Welcome to Down to Herf, the podcast for cigar smokers, whiskey drinkers, and for the people just looking to kick back, light up, and have a good time. I'm your host, Jerry, and I'm joined by, as always, my co-host, Gio and Kayla. Fellas, 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 how are we doing on this fine Sunday night? Caleb, what's up? I know it's Sunday. We're feeling good. We're drinking good. But when this episode comes out, you guys are going to have a nice Whiskey Wednesday to enjoy. I like that. I like that. Gio, how you doing over there, buddy? Doing well. You know, Bill's got us off a suicide watch for another week. You know, we got a W. Thank God. We definitely needed it. The city needed it, truthfully. And it felt good to just beat the Jets. I, we won't get into too much football, but if there's any team I hate more in our division, it's the Jets. The Jets and Miami, for sure. Jets, it used- Jets, always. Yeah? I hate New York. That's your one. <laughs> That's the one. All right. Well, we have a guest in studio tonight. Very special episode. Why don't we get into that, Gio? All right, guys. We are here with the owner and founder of Hartman's Distillery here in Buffalo, New York. The one, the only, Justin Hartman. He is your favorite former lawyer turned master distiller. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Thanks for having me back, guys. Appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Uh, what's What's been new? Lots to get to. Yeah, yeah. What's What has it been? We're, we're all, all over the place. Uh, we're here right now, though, uh, because we have a huge uh, allocated bourbon that we're dropping this week, and you guys are going to be the first to try it outside of uh, the distillery, folks. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, before we get into the bourbon, as always, you know, we got to get into what we're smoking today. Guys, we actually are going to be smoking... Black and mild plastic tips. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> Just kidding there. Jerry's father-in-law left these here. I had to, you know, play into that a little bit. You know, that's the strong island in them. No but, doubt. I'll take one, though. <laughs> like, for real. <laughs> what are you, new? <laughs> no, it's like when I was like 16 again. <laughs> like I said, what are you, new? <laughs> All right, guys. We got a fun one here. This is something that we actually got to sample uh jerry had a lot of these at pca the freud cigar co limited edition sigmund chapter one the disrupt the disruptor yep that's a mouthful of a name this is a mouthful of a cigar at a whopping seven and a half by 50 double corona (laughs) the actual name is a for the size on here is called a big mother I think we know what was followed after that. You know what? You know, Sigmund Freud was quite the sicko. Had a lot of mommy issues there, you know. That's what they say in your sociology classes. And I would love to tell you guys what the wrapper, binder, and filler were this, but they're all undisclosed. But there's five different fillers in here. The strength of this is a medium to full, and this bad boy will set you back a whopping $44 a cigar. What a crazy fucking price so i think remember when this first came out and they started talking about this on half wheel we were like what the fuck who do these people think they are 44 dollars. this is a brand new company what the hell are they doing then i got the opportunity to smoke this cigar a couple times at pca and i said all right they might be on to something here this thing really is a very good cigar uh I'm looking forward to revisiting it, and uh, if there's anything else you want to talk on it, Gio, I'm sure there's more. Yep, so this is actually out of uh, the Eladio Diaz factory in the Dominican. Uh, for those of you who know, don't know, Eladio was you know the old uh, blender for Davidoff. So there's definitely some fine arts in this. Uh, supposedly, there is some really, really aged tobacco in this, but we have no fucking clue to prove that. Uh, there was a whopping 350 boxes of 10 released. Jerry probably smoked five of these boxes at PCA. <laughs> That's why there's only 350, because they just kept giving it to him. They like that guy here. Shout out to whoever the rep was. I forget his name, but he has ties to Zach Benson for the Sabres. I remember that much of the conversation. Cause yeah, we were like, I can't remember his name either, but he was like, you know that Zach Benson on the Sabres? That guy's going to be your best player one day. I was like, Really? Yeah, he played with his son, who was, like, about to get drafted. I just don't know. I don't remember the name at all. He's like, yeah, I'm from Ontario. Well, let's get him on the pod, you know? Let's talk about Sigmund Freud and what a sicko he was, <laughs> amongst <laughs> other things. I don't know if he's going to want to d- yeah. dive into the, the you know, the, the sick history of uh, Sigmund Freud, but, hey, you never know. Weirder things have happened. Also, I got to ask you guys, was getting the large-ass wrapper on this a pain for you as well? 
Uh, Honestly, it felt like uh, it just slipped right off. Yeah. Oh, just, mine just, mine was a fucking annoying little papyrus scroll. Just uh, okay. just accidentally fell off. I don't know how that happened. But uh, yeah. appearance-wise... That's how you got very, your three daughters. Very nifty. Yeah. <laughs> the, whole, <laughs> the whole fucking cigar is a wrapper. Yeah. yeah. Or a band, sorry. It's a great appearance, man. It looks good. They really outdo themselves. I know they're expensive brand, but they make everything look pretty. Caleb, you know, for your grower gang, that's what seven inches is, buddy. That, to, all you guys out, to all you guys out there. This, this is a true seven inches here. Grower seven gang. and a half, actually. A grower gang. It's cold outside. Yeah, seriously. But, uh, Caleb, obviously, usually this is where I turn over to you, but I'm going to turn it over to, to Justin right now, and I'm going to let him introduce what we're drinking tonight. So oh, the floor is yours, man. Awesome. This is very special. This is very special. Thank you. Uh, so, let me thrust it out here. This is actually, uh, depending on when you have this edited and released, this is the official release of our latest allocated product. Um, there's only 500 of these in existence. Bust it right out here. Woo! Yeah, pretty. Nice, you need a uh, drum roll or something here. Where am I at? Oh, here I am. Right there. Check that out. That is very, very cool. This is called the Cotter Cask. What we did is we took... Two of our oldest bourbon products, put them on the boat, the Edward M. Cotter, which is the Buffalo Fire Department's fireboat. Um, it's also the oldest operating fireboat in the world and a national historic landmark. We age the bourbon, four barrels of the bourbon, on the boat for an entire year. And just, uh, just a week and a half ago, brought it off the boat, blended the two expressions of bourbon together, and that's what we'll be having. Ooh. So I'm going to open it up for you here, and we'll get a little pour. You know, I gotta say that bottle, what a royal look to it, huh? No, there we go. Here, here, let me. Oh, there's the another one. Right there, there it is. Look at that red. That pops. That is, that is super wow. cool. All right, so let's talk about presentation. We got an awesome looking cigar and an awesome looking bottle too. So two for two today. <whistles> that looks, yo. Know, appearances mean a lot in this business, and man, these things are awesome looking. Oh, thank you, Justin. I appreciate that, my man. Cannot wait to get into this bad boy. I'm excited. Oh, here. I'll run it over to you. Yeah, that's fine. We'll let, we'll let Justin keep talking on it. Sure. So, uh, here we go. I'll run that out. Are oh, you yeah. take the bottle? Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. gotcha. This will work. Yeah, so about uh, just over a year ago, uh, a bourbon enthusiast who's also in the Buffalo Fire Department um, came to me with the... Uh, Cotter Captain, John Six, we sat down. He's like, we got an idea. What do you think about agents of whiskey uh, aboard the Cotter? Uh, and I loved it. Um, loved every bit of the idea, especially the tie into Hartman's Distilling Co. with the Cotter. Hartman's Distilling Co., uh, for those of you who don't know, is down at 55 Chicago Street. We're about a, a seven iron away from the Buffalo River. And the Cotter uh, is instrumental in breaking up the ice in the Buffalo River. Every spring, otherwise the entire first ward would flood. And it's been doing this for like I don't know, eighty years or something like that. So um, cool connection to the Cotter, saving the area where the distillery is. Uh, and we decided to, you know, also of course make a tie in a charity event because the Cotter's kept alive and functioning by a conservancy fund. Um, so thirteen dollars from every single bottle will go towards the conservancy fund. That's such a cool idea. Um, it almost. I mean, obviously, to piggyback on some other things that, uh, you know, other companies that have done this, is it gives like almost like a Jefferson's vibe. Absolutely. Like yep. an yep. age to see kind of thing. Yeah, so there's, so there's is cool. You, you could watch the, you know, you could go online and, and see what the journey is. Most of theirs, if you, if you follow along, are aged at sea somewhere between four and six months. This was aged at sea for, on the lake, Lake Erie, Buffalo Harbor, for, um, yeah, full year. Wow. So I I gotta take shots at the Lake Erie here. Yeah, sure. Go ahead, man. <laughs> eee, Lake Erie, eee. <laughs> good eats, good eats. If you eat something, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the walleye, the walleye, <laughs> the walleyes with three eyes. Yeah, sure, sure. The mutant fish. <laughs> Thanks, Bethlehem Steel. <laughs> yeah, right. Seriously, uh, Fuck. dude, this bottle is beautiful. Thank you. It yeah, really yeah. is, and I I love the the touch of elegance and the uh, elegancy that you guys saw. Uh, you know, added to it with uh, obviously the nice sash or what would you call it? I don't even know what you call sleeve. It. A sleeve, sure. yeah. like a nice sleeve. Right, right. But uh-huh. uh, dude, 
what a what a cool idea. And I mean, I have a picture of it up right now. I mean, obviously, I'll throw this up on the show so people can see what this bottle looks like, and so they can see what the boat looks like because uh, the red the red on red looks amazing. That's a great picture. Well, I'll play this little video, so I'll give a I'll give our listeners a little idea of uh, what this boat actually is and what it does. So here we go. So I never really knew this boat actually had a purpose. I just thought people rode it in the summertime. <laughs> so it's actually the most photographed item in Buffalo, believe it or not. Oh, wow. Um, yes. And it, it does. You, you'll see it in the Buffalo River or whatever. And they'll have all the hoses going. Um, and it does fight fires when needed. But, but its key purpose to date is this breaking up of the ice, which is huge. See, I didn't really know a lot about the cotter. I just see, like I said, people in the summertime, you can go on it. Yes. Some people yep. get to go on it and... You know, it looks really cool, and all the hoses are going. But my understanding of the uh, Edward Cotter was that it actually used to just be in like Elizabeth, New Jersey, and actually was part of, I think, a, f- a fleet of three. It actually was the third boat. Um, it kind of helped, you know, underwhelm the other two boats, so it took a lot of pressure off the other boats. That's my understanding too. Yeah, from from the history of it, it's it's just has such a cool tie to this downtown Buffalo First Ward. Uh, yeah. So. Guys in the valley, thank the cotter. You guys would be underwater. <laughs> yep. Yep. Absolutely. Man. So, how did this boat get from like Jersey area to Buffalo? Does anyone know about that? That or was actually going to be my next question. Oh, I was that, hoping that I don't know. No, I don't know the history that well. I could look it up real quick. Yeah, yeah look it up, yeah, Caleb. I, I feel like that's what you're here for, buddy. You're always good at researching things. <laughs> I'll do it real on the fly. Yeah. yeah. You got the computer in front of you. He can't do it. He's kind of you know doing running the show here. We got the recording going. So I can while you're doing that, I can go into uh, what that does to the whiskey right like why why age it on a boat absolutely um other than the the you know the fresh lake here air as, as you alluded to and the, and the barometric pressure changes is the agitation right you you have whiskey companies out there that are playing music to bourbon um jefferson's puts it on a boat other ways of, of agitating it and the idea is uh you're really exposing and interacting the the bourbon inside the barrel repeatedly to the charcoal to the, to the char and the char, believe it or not, a lot of people don't, might not know this, but its primary purpose is filtration. It's taking out all those heavy cognitures. It's, um, it's like put, putting a bunch of hard-cut marble in, a, in, a, you know, in, in some kind of container and shaking it up, and it's kind of smoothing it out, right? You shake it up, and it's, it's polishing. It's really polishing. That's what it is. And that's, that's the concept of any kind of agitation in bourbon. Um, not so much of, you know, it's not like exposing it to like deeper caramel flavors or anything. It's really having that charcoal continually polish it for an entire year. So, yeah, I mean, for the most part, I used to just think, I mean, obviously in my young days, I just thought the charcoal was just to give it that color. But apparently it does so much more. Oh, yeah. uh, secondly, I got to say, thinking back on Jefferson's project, I would take the Lake Erie water over the, the New York water. I'm just throwing it out there. (laughs) Well, wasn't it that, like, all right, obviously we're comparing, you know, ocean water since it's at sea, right? So, like, was there, do you know if, like, the salt water plays an effect, or is this open storage, or is it, you know... They usually put on a tanker of some kind. Okay. Um, And I think they're up to, like, Journey 29, right? So you could see, you go online and see where these these boats have been. And it's not just the New York water. I mean, it goes down to the Panama Canal. It'll, some of these will go all the way over to Asia. But it's it's a three-month journey. It's a four-month journey. It's essentially from the New York Harbor around back, right? And, yeah. and whatever that might be, um, exposing it to fresh ocean air and the agitation. And the whole idea is about, is really the agitation, the sloshing, continually okay. sloshing around. So if you were a visitor on the Cotter this year, yes. could you see the barrels? No. So they were where? Where were they? They were tucked like, away in the hall. Okay, they were okay. in the hall. They were, you probably walked, and probably several hundred people walked right over the top. Didn't know they were there. Really? Yeah. No, a little absolutely. top secret, uh, top, top secret. secret project going on. It was very cool. much a top secret project, and I don't uh, blame the F- Buffalo Fire Department for wanting to be that way. Yeah, they want people trying to get on the cotter and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got four giant barrels of whiskey. <laughs> uh, I mean. Yeah, but, but, where where is the uh, the cotter actually stored in right, Buffalo? Right across from Swanee House. Really? Yeah, there's a dock right there, right by the bridge, the, the Michigan Street Bridge. It's almost mm-hmm. right under it. Definitely some homeless people down there that probably would have tried to jump oh, onto absolutely. the cotter. Right. So yeah, they would have yeah, probably yeah. loved that. And oh. and that's another you know time from us. We're right there. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh yeah, you're right there yeah. too. Yeah. 
Or we know a whole bunch of like uh, Buffalo bourbon enthusiasts who, if they got word of this, they might have uh, maybe tried to hop on see what's going on there. You know, yeah. a lot of crazy. <laughs> I like to fans. say our community, yeah, is not that kind of. I, way. Yeah, it's actually trying, our bourbon community. They're not trying to do no Ocean's Eleven shit for <laughs> whiskey barrels, like. <laughs> or no uh, Pappy heist like out of that Netflix special where they're stealing barrels of Pappy right out of the factory. Oh, I haven't trace. seen that yet. It's Dynasty. a great yeah. story. I gotta, I gotta watch that. So some people, they, they say that. Uh, that was probably some of the reason that that product became so allocated and so hard to get because they were behind so much because this lunatic was just working there, just rolling barrels out in the middle of the night. No one would even notice they were gone. Just taking bottles off the assembly line, put t- out of the packages, and bringing full barrels to his softball games for his teammates to drink. Come on. Yeah, literally. <laughs> it's all yeah, done. you got to watch it. It's a great oh. special. He, he was loading up like Pappy 23 in the back of a pickup truck. They would just like tap the bunghole. And then he would just pour it right out of the barrel for the guys at what their a, softball games. Talk about a friend to have. Yeah, dude, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> then the dude had this entire black market where he was selling the shit to like doctors and like high end people that were like, oh my God, how did you get this? You know, I'll take this much of it if I can. And they were paying him thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And this dude was just like, dude, wow. there's so much of this shit. I, they don't even notice it's gone. And now he does tours on the Kentucky Bourbon Trail, just making more money. Right. Does he actually? Yeah, that's what our tour guy said when we were there. Jeez. Really? Yeah. I didn't sit in the front. I oh, couldn't hear yeah. uh, past everyone screaming Could, in the front. Yeah, couldn't hear past the kids screaming. So, so little did they know, though, this lunatic then created this demand. They should thank it. Right. Right. Now now they, for, <laughs> well, the secondary market should thank it. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, a sec, as a pretty much a secondary consumer, I do not thank him. There you go. Because <laughs> uh, these, these bottles are just, some of them, one, <clears throat> unobtainable. And if they are obtainable for you. The price is astronomical. It just it doesn't make sense. Like I don't have twenty five hundred dollars to spend on a bottle of Pappy twenty three. Right. I don't know a lot of people that do. Plus, I don't have a nice. Uh, I don't have like this great relationship with like a uh, you know one of these companies like Southern or Empire that I can just get a bottle. Of. You know, it's fuckers. Yeah. Well, I, I can tell you through our experience, they don't just you don't just get a bottle. Like no, no, no. You, I you got to play the game. You know. Yeah, like, I understand. For my. Maybe you can touch on this a little bit, but my sure. my understanding is they'll bring you a bunch of shit and you can't deny any of it. And if you start denying it, they'll stop bringing you other shit. To some some aspect, yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, they it's allocated to their customers that have built up a certain profile, and there's you got to work with somebody to decide what that profile is. Okay, is it skews? Is it volume? Is it you know, anytime that they they send you a case of Buffalo Trace, you don't. You don't say no. I'm good on Buffalo Trace today. So sure. you're, you're right. Yeah, it's pay to play. <laughs> What's crazy is like shit like that is why there's state-owned liquor stores. Yeah, like, like I'm I'm actually glad we don't have state-owned liquor stores here because that would be a cluster. Have you ever been to an ABC? They're insane. You right. could buy like one bottle, like a daily. You could just go in like if you had a family party that you were having with like 200 people. Yeah, you could buy like one bottle. It's so controlled. The SLA, they run everything. And what's nuts is, like, they're fucking way more corrupt than these stores. At least they're selling them. Like, I remember Virginia just got, like, sued that, like, they were keeping all, like, the high-end stuff for, like, the mayors, the governor, the the, the state judges, all yeah. that. They're, like, when it hit the liquor store or, like, the state-owned stores, because they can only sell it at MSRP. Oh, okay. Uh... Judge Smith, here's your pappy. <laughs> you know. I was I was in Ohio this last spring, and they're state run, yeah. and I went because their liquor stores are in their grocery stores, yeah. but they're so I went into one, and there's a sweet old man like stocking the shelves. I'm like, you don't have to have any Weller, do you? He goes, yeah, yeah, we do. What are you looking for? And he starts walking towards the back. The older woman that was running the, the joint is like, not for you. Just whoa, looked right at me and said, whoa. not for you. Damn. Yep. I mean, like, just straight up. No. Straight up. Straight up. So they. I don't know how what the legality is. I know that they can't sell it, at, uh, you know, they can't have a certain markup, right? Yeah. I are they allowed to hold it back for their premium customers? I don't know. Maybe. Well, they... I mean, I know that like they can't. Like, maybe it's a resident thing. Like, right. I don't know on that level. I just know that like there was a lot of controversy because, like, you as Joe consumer would never have the opportunity to buy it even at a secondary market because before they even hit the store shelves judge mayor 
councilman, oh, the I city get, attorney. Yeah, so it was straight it was, politics. Right. Like, uh, it was only uh, going uh, to the politicians that liked bourbon. Uh, the story of bourbon. There's so much to talk about it. Uh, uh, I mean, is, obviously, we have cool projects like the one that you do. Uh, maybe you want to tell... So, like, we've obviously changed since the last time you've been on the show a lot. Mm -hmm. Significantly. Uh, we're now on Cigar Hustler Podcast Network. This goes out to so many more people. That's maybe, awesome, man. Maybe Congrats, we should guys. just dive into your, you, yourself, and, and what Hartman's actually is, not only to the whiskey industry, but to the Buffalo area. Yeah, sure. Like a, a little bit of a recap. Sure. So, um, uh, Hartman's 101. Yeah. <laughs> and we got uh, new listeners, new viewers from all over, so they need to know who you are, too, especially if you're creeping into their states yeah. with your Hartman. So. Oh, absolutely. So... Uh, Hartman's Distilling Co. is a family-owned and operated business. Um, uh, we're My wife and I actually are from Buffalo, but living in New York City when uh, my dad got me into bourbon by um, taking, uh, actually introducing my brother and I, who was in L.A., I was in New York, to Angel's Envy. And we didn't chat a whole lot, and, and, and suddenly we're like, you know, sending text messages and, and stories and email stories, and it kind of brought us together, did the Kentucky Bourbon Trail, uh, trail. Um, for the first time, loved it, um, and that kind of started the wheels turning on the whole coming back to Buffalo, family roots, slowing down, you know, spending more time and making memories, uh, and opening a distillery. And a uh, few years of classes and going around the country and trying to see, all right, is this really worth burning the boat, so to speak? Uh, Hartman's, we moved back to Buffalo and started Hartman's Distilling Co. And um, you know, I took my training and experience and, and, and tried to make the best product I possibly could. And that's what I think really uh, sets Hartman's apart from some of the, the competition is we put all our money into to top-notch barrels. You know, we were independent stave, Calvin Cooperage only. 50 70% of the pl flavor comes from the barrels, right? So make sure you're getting the top product, um, whether that's MGP, if you're using sourced, or the top product uh, barrel-wise. Uh, top yeast brand. We use uh, yeasts from um, down from Lebanon or from Kentucky, from uh, Pat Heist's little little company called Wilderness Trail that just so happened to yeah. ha have a rather large sale. Pat Pat Heist is a doctor, by the way, doctor in chemistry, nicest guy in the world. I can't remember if we talked about all this these time. chemist guys. That's yeah. how they end up being distillers. That's Greg yeah. Metz. Greg so Metz did the same exact oh, thing. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 That this guy, he'll get on the phone with you and, and you know, he'll talk you through a problem. This is a couple years ago. But still, it, who's, who gets on the phone with you like that to talk about a yeast situation you're having? <laughs> you know, like, so, you know, best yeast strain we could possibly get our hands on, um, best barrels. And then the thing about Buffalo, New York is we have tremendous, tremendous day to day barometric pressure changes. And I always tell people, and, you know, everybody talks about, well, it's, it's the heat and the cold that moved the barrel, the, the, the whiskey product in and out of the barrel. The heat, the cold is like someone opening the door, but physically something actually has to push the whiskey through the door, and that's pressure, barometric pressure. Buffalo has almost double the day-to-day -day barometric pressure changes as Kentucky, and that's and that's just a simple Google search. We're very similar to Scotland, Ireland, and it's all because of the um, jet stream. The northeast and the northwest of the United States are phenomenal areas to age whiskey, and so we're aging all our whiskey in, in very low climate, you know, in uncontrolled warehouses where we let just let those crazy buffalo weather patterns do its thing, man. How many barrels do you guys have right now? We're Hartman's produced just over four hundred. We just passed the four hundred mark. That's four hundred fifty three. We only use fifty three gallons. We don't do the ten gallon, fifteen gallon. We only go the, the, the way you're supposed to do it. Let, let time do its thing. Yeah. So now yep. just to clarify, so this project, this, was this sourced or was this Hartman's? No, this is sourced. So this okay. is both our MGP products. It's an MGP wheat and MGP rye. Okay. And that's kind of how we started. Was Our niche was we're to blend a high rye and a high wheat. Four, oh, four oh, grain, and that's that's so that's what Hartman's. That's why I like it. Yeah, it's a four so grain. So <laughs> it, 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 you get a lot of that sweetness yes. yep. from yep. the wheat. And then you get a little on the back end from that rye. Exactly. But you don't get like a long finish. It's not like killing you. No. It's I, I think that's the charcoal. I, what I picked up, you know, of course, the big question is, so do you think the boat did anything? And I think it's a little less of a bite. I think it's just a little bit more. It doesn't burn. as It's just that little more polish on the end. Doesn't, I'm not too sure it gives us any more deeper, like I said, caramel flavors, the agitation. It's just supposed to kind of rough out those hard, hard alcohol ethanol notes. Yeah. So um, I got a lot of that ethanol smell. 
when I first smelled this thing, but the taste, uh, you said this is over 120 proof, right? 122. 122 proof. So, uh, like Jerry said, not a long finish at all. And I'm getting like some baking spice, some, a little bit of spiciness to it. And I know it's not coming from the cigar because this is a very smooth cigar, but a little bit of baking spice, kind of spicy, but uh, just no bite at all for 122 proof. This is wow. And like you said, I think whatever's going on in Buffalo, it's, it's working with this uh, bottle you got here. I'm Thank loving you. it. Now, with the rye on it, because I'm one of the people, I don't like rye. It's just not for me. Okay. But I don't taste a lot of rye. What is the breakdown of the rye, do you know, in the blender? I think I do. you don't like like a high rye. I don't like high rye. I really don't. So when you say high rye, because this has changed dramatically in the last 10 years, what are you talking about? Um, like, uh, I don't like like the High West Rendezvous rye. Like, I, th- I think you meant like mash bill. I think like, yeah. bourbon. Oh, okay. so th- so- I'm just giving you an example of okay. what I would... I want to make sure, uh, just to clarify, okay. it's it's a bourbon, so it's a blend of a weeded bourbon and a rye bourbon. Oh, okay, a rye yes. bourbon. All so right. there's no rye whiskey in this product. Okay, well, it's, that makes ju- it's just, a lot just more two sense. bourbons, and the rye mash is a 21 percent rye mash. Okay, I feel like Geo doesn't like when it's over 50 percent. So if we do like, we've done like a 95.5, and Geo hates it. Yeah, we it. did a 95.5. Yeah, five. so we have yeah. a rye whiskey. It's a 95.5. Yeah, the, I, not I, my cup of tea. Yes. I, so, you know, I personally, your everyday rye whiskey that you put out, I, I think that's a great rye. I love that one. Thank you. Yeah. The black label for those of you guys in stores, if you see Hartman's black, that's the rye. It's really great. That's, so, yeah, that's definitely become like a cult favorite. Oh, no I, doubt I was going to say, I, I know a lot of guys that, uh, you know, are like bourbon enthusiasts in the area, and I don't think they can say enough good things about the, you know, the Hartman's rye. Yeah, it, it, it is took off. really, and it looks real sharp on the shelves. Cool. Especially we'll inside the distillery. Oh, yeah. It looks cool. Oh, yeah. The whole distillery, when you're at the bar at Hartman's and you see all the bottles, they're all striped color-wise. You got the the blue, the black. You got your uh, the Loganberry vodka, the mm-hmm. regular vodka, the gin, color-coordinated and striped. It looks really nice when you go in the bar for a drink. Thank you. Appreciate Haven't that. been there in a while, so I'm due for a trip. Oh, you're due. Come on in. I, I, mean, I don't get out at that much anymore. <laughs> you guys have you've kids, done a kids, lot, kids. though, since yeah. we've had you on, too. I think the seltzer was, wasn't out beforehand. Correct. Like, we've uh, released now three flavors of seltzers. Oh, those, shit. Those are taking over time, and but, but, but they're selling. Yeah. People love those things. Everyone likes seltzers. It's, it's crazy, right? It's just hilarious. It's just but, part of the market now. It's yeah. just so normal. Mm-hmm. And the, the question we all have in the industry is, is that, uh, you know, is this generation Seagram's or, you know, is it, is it, is it here to stay? I'm curious oh. because there's just so many different brands putting it out. Like you got the Nelk guys with the happy dad shit. Like, mm-hmm. first off, those are expensive as fuck, by the way. Like, really? Yeah. I like, didn't even know that. They're like, you, most places anywhere from like seven to $9 a can. What? What? Yeah. A can? Like at a bar? At a talking? bar. Oh, okay. at a bar. Okay. Yeah. Like if you were consuming this at like a store? Uh, I'd say probably like even, normal. Reasonable. Like a 10 pack for a four. Um, $10 know, for a four. Like a 12 is probably still like, you know, 20, 25. That's about right. Really? Yeah. Like, fuck. They, they got the marketing shit though. They advertise so much that like, it's that like 22 year old, like golf kid, like that, like super preppy Chad. <laughs> it's working for them though it is though like <laughs> they got their piece of the pie they got their piece of the market man yeah. and they're running with it and they fratted it out like it's hilarious like you see barstool people do it you, like drinking it it's fucking nuts <laughs> but like seltzer you got the seltzer so your rye obviously this project you know and the experimental labels oh yeah, yeah. yeah you just released two didn't yes, you? yes we did just the uh, uh, first week of October, second week of October. Like I'd that. say I remember trying it the last time I was in Hartman's, <laughs> but I think I sampled a little of it, and I was like, oh, yeah, this is fantastic. I was drunk. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah this is Justin, great. Justin, this is great, but I can't read right now. <laughs> <laughs> I could have given you anything. What's that say? <laughs> Ch- cherry cask? No, sherry cask. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that what it was? It was a sherry cask, right? Uh, No. Was, One of them? Um, Grand Grand Marnier. Grand Marnier. Was, yeah. That was your I number three, which right? One. Number three is the Grand Marnier. You're thinking of a year ago, we did um, a wine cask. Yes, the wine, uh, the wine and, and the, the stout. stout yeah. It was wine and the stout. And then this year, it was the Grand Marnier and the double oaked. Double oak with the toasted um, with a toasted element. Double gonna, oak there, G. I'm going to have to try that double oaked. Double oak was sick. So I, heard I, I, so I like double oak. Like, oh my gosh, it was so good. For like, I know controversial like <laughs> people make fun of me, but like Woodford Double Oak was one of my favorite. Just like easy drinks, like yeah. fuck it, it's consistent and I like it. Fuck you all if you've got something to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 
So I hurt. So I heard the Grand Marnier one sold great, but but I heard everyone loves the four a lot better. Yes, I know what like where I ha- where I'm at. There's no three left, but the four is doing really well. So that might just be numbers t- to a certain degree too. There was only I think 210 of the three. Oh, a little there's less. 480 of the four. That oh. makes sense too. But the four once it started selling, it was selling because it, it's good. It's solid. That that it's like campfire in a bottle. Honestly, with with a little bit of caramel to it. When you when you uh, come up with these ideas for for new projects, like what's that like? Take me through that process. What's what's that like? You know, when, how do you come up with an idea? You just say, "All right, let's fucking do it." That sounds like a good idea. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's <laughs> I'll wake up at three a.m. You know, and your mind's spinning. You know, you, you've been there where you're just thinking about all the things you you haven't done. Then I don't know. You you go down this tangent like, "Oh, that'd be a great experimental." Thing. You know, and you write it in your phone real quick. Mm-hmm. I do the same stuff, man. I think I come up with some of my best work around 3 a.m., especially now with the uh, the new baby. And I, I got to throw that out. Man. I got to throw it out to you, man. What, what is yours? A month? Not even three weeks. Three hey, weeks. Congrats. Yeah. Congratulations, congratulations yeah. man. Hey, thanks for making time while uh, I got a newborn. Kidding? I jumped at this opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's business. I got to go. I got to go, honey. You got to get the new uh, product. This is advertising. Out there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm due soon. Shit, so yeah. December twelfth. Oh December my god, 12? we're all gonna have these little kids. Yeah. Running around. Now boy or girl? Uh boy. All right. This so is you... the future staff of Hartman's. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and the the wife realized it a little too late, but we named it after my favorite bourbon, Parker. Ooh, oh yes. right. Parker. Yeah, we came up with that name. Well, I suggest that name about four years ago, you know, and, and she's like, Oh, I love that name. I'm like, oh let's you know, let's think about that one. Okay. Parker's Heritage. Yeah. Yeah, it was all a thing. Though. You big Heaven Hill guy? I love Heaven Hill. Yeah? Yeah, honestly. I we were just there. Prosper. Yeah, we bottled, uh, me and Jerry each bottled the bottle. I did the Larceny, he did the Bernheims. Yep, yep. It's yeah. a nice weeded bourbon, or weeded whiskey. Yep. Oh, yeah. I, I, I didn't make that trip. <laughs> Next year, buddy. Yeah. Without without the kids. Yeah. Dude, my kid was good. Well, wait till they get older. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I was going to say, my kid didn't do anything. Was, sleeping, you know, at the young age, you got to love the yeah. sleep. You got to love the sleep time. You that, know, they, they went on this trip, and, you know, my girlfriend is seven and a half months pregnant at the time of the trip so it's like you never know what could happen like yeah, no. uncomfortable and then how much drive. fun are you really having at seven and a half months pregnant you're not gonna drink you're just kind of well you're just there on top of that she does not do well with like long car rides like so her mom lives out in fredonia and by the time like driving home she's like i have a headache i was like and that's like a friggin' like hour and a half drive yeah louisville <laughs> might have been a yeah, a hike. The, the, the a little long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little out of the question. All right. You know, that's another product, though. You you bring up Parker's Heritage. Yes. Uh, that's another bottle that's really hard to get around here. I don't really see that around here. Yeah. That's haven't, super allocated. Haven't seen it in a couple of years. It's that's, been a couple of years since, and not just like my store, any store. I don't see Heaven Hill 17s. I don't see Heaven Hill 27s. I don't. Know, I don't see any of that shit. Saw it. Saw it last year, but an outrageous price. Really, like over four hundred dollars. Like Jeez. over. So, unfortunately for us, uh, New York City kind of jams us up. They get allocated to New York, and, the, and it, so these are all southern products we're talking about. Uh, southern has heaven hell, and for what I'm told, is the city just consumes ninety eight percent of the allocation. I believe it. I, like, believe I it. got lucky and got a couple of bottles of uh, uh, Elijah Craig eighteen this year. So. Good. Good. Yeah, I love that bottle. Great. Super good. Um, I don't know if you've had the opportunity to try the new Elijah Craig 923 yet. I haven't. It's a 133 proof. It's their, their newest barrel proof. Okay. Uh, age 13 years, 7 months. Come on. And it is good. pretty damn good. Okay. It is pretty damn good. Does it drink like 130 proof? <laughs> it drinks. It does not drink like 133. It probably drinks like. I don't know, one seventeen ish, one twenty. It's a little lot. I mean, it's not. It, it doesn't taste like you're drinking one hundred and thirty three proof whiskey. Okay, I'll have to try it. Well, this this right here, this Hartman's does not taste like one hundred twenty two at all. I'll give it like maybe a hundred five, something like that. Easy si- easy sip for me. Yeah, no I'm, bite. I'm not biting this. I'm not fighting this at all either. Perfect. It, the nose is. It's, it, I picked up on this, and I think this might be attributed to the boat as well. The nose is mellow. Like, yeah, I don't get a lot on the nose. Yeah, it's very mellow, very it's it's almost it's there, but it's just not like in your face. 
Yeah. yeah. See, I saw the proof point when I looked at the bottle, and when I sm- went to go like smell it, I was like, oh, this is going to be gas. <laughs> no. Well, not gas. I got uh, two questions for you. Well, one will stick with the the Cotter cask. Sure. Now, do you guys have like a flavor profile breakdown that you are putting out for advertisement, like the taste profile, the smell? Or is there something that you can come up and tell us right now on the podcast, or is that still in development? Uh, we do have a a write up that's going to be out when we release it. Sorry uh, to put you on the yeah, spot. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of what we came <laughs> so, up with. So uh, I kind of we do that. So going back to one of your points about how do you guys come up with some of these things? A lot of it's uh, I'll sit down. We have a production team of two people that that um, that run our entire production right now, and they have phenomenal palates. So let's sit down and be like, hey guys, let's brainstorm. What do you got? Um, we'll do it usually once a month, kind of like just a session. Like, what do you, you know, what what do you think about for this or that? This and they, we have a couple other things already in in, in the works that are aging, uh, that they've come up with. But they really are great at picking apart flavor profiles, um, what's on the nose. Uh, we have uh, one of them, is a woman named Molly. She she actually comes from a winery. She was running an entire winery uh, before she came to Hartman's. Just wanted to do something different, and her her palate's just next level. So I, I kind of I defer to them because at this point it's beyond me, uh, and then I got to be honest I don't remember exactly what they came. That, that's all right. We'll be, <laughs> everyone out there be on the lookout for the write up. Yes, this, uh, yes. Cotter cast. You'll get remember, all the information. Wait, we'll give it to you as best as we can. When they were going through it, I was like, yes, yes, that's exactly <laughs> right. I can assure you, you're not getting that from the three of us. Right. <laughs> I, I, you're not. Guys, what we'll do I'll is try when, to Jerry, when Jerry's editing this, you know, on the fly, he'll add a link to it. <laughs> I'll, I'll try while we're drinking it and I go into my next pour. I'll try to come. I already said some baking spice and a little bit of spiciness to it. Um, my other question I had, it was going back to the Grand Marnier cast, the number three for experimental. Now, where did you come up with that idea? Did you just have, happen to find or know someone who had like an empty Grand Marnier cast laying around? You're just like, I got to do it because I, I think Grand Marnier would make a good flavor profile for an experimental series uh yeah so we're part of a bunch of different uh sites and companies and newsletters that there's actually companies that will just take these casks and have access to them and sell them to you right okay. um and sometimes you're on a waiting list we're on a waiting list for the grand marnier um for roughly about eight months because okay. we want it fresh right yeah. so i got an email hey justin we have a grand marnier what do you think you ready for it absolutely please send it asap i've already asked the same company for another one and it, it's they're like we'll put you back on the waiting list. I have no idea when we'll get another. Damn. Yeah. So another Grand Marnier. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cool. I didn't know if there was another uh, secret uh, stash coming. <laughs> we got a couple in the works. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm waiting for like a nice little Amberana Hartman's. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. So that seems to be gaining a lot of popularity. Uh, it's so hit and miss though. Uh, some guys are like absolutely fucking not, and then some people are like. Okay, I mean, you're starting to see that with like Penelope. Penelope put out the Rio. I don't yep. know if you have you had the opportunity Haven't to try it. it. We got it in. Real good. Yeah. Okay. Really, really good. Um, I actually really like the Amberana finish. Uh, to touch back, a lot of people don't like the Amberana finish. Uh, you get a lot of cinnamon. It almost tastes like you're drinking like somebody said it was like overpriced Fireball because <laughs> you get so like so much cinnamon toast wow. crunch. But we always say it's like that Cinnabon that you take out of the oven and you and you put the icing on. That's what I get. Or that's what you get a lot too, Jerry. So, so it's a great, like, I don't know, if you like breakfast like that, it's it's a good taste. I've had the Who Amber doesn't like breakfast like that? Yeah. Everyone loves breakfast. <laughs> See, just to, like, touch on that, like, I think you being a distiller, you'd probably be able to know, like, there's certain flavors that do better regionally. And I think Amberana for the Northeast is perfect because... We have a true all four seasons. Some just have summer, winter, right. or just summer, mm-hmm. so on and so forth. So, like, Jerry pointed out that, like, this is perfect for, like, that fall campfire cold day, and you just want that. Like, I think that over here, Amberana is a lot of potential. Okay. Right. I'll keep that in mind. You never know. I think it's like a Brazilian oak. Is, okay. Or something like that. Brazilian wood. Technically not an oak. Yeah, it's not but, an oak. But it is from Brazil, so yeah. Um, but also, uh, Justin, I want to touch on, congrats on your uh, making Buffalo's 40 under 40 list. That's yeah. a real big honor here for uh, in Appreciate the city of Buffalo. It. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so what went into the making? Like, who judges that and what what qualifies you to be on that list to get nominated? And then, then you won. You made the list, so that's awesome. 
Yeah, so Buffalo Business First puts it out. Uh, they do it once a year, and uh, somebody nominates you, and um, or more than one people nominate you, and they they take all their nominations as kind of review uh, what they've what they've done, what they've accomplished, um, how old they are. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just snuck in there, so maybe that's why I made it. it was, yeah, this is his last we, chance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whoever nominated, well, I know one of the people that nominated was my brother, so I think he um, he might have hit that hit that uh, on the head hard there. But um, and they just kind of look at your accomplishments, what, what you do for the Buffalo community, and and they make their selection. So it was a huge honor. It was a great uh, event that they had recently down at the convention center. I think there's about 500 people, and you know uh, it was cool to to be amongst the 39 other individuals. And some of these, you know, I kind of felt out of place because we had CEOs of companies and stuff like that. I mean, <laughs> you, banks you are and stuff. you are a well, CEO that's true. Of a I mean, but uh, yeah, it was a huge honor. Did so they purposely I, only? Pick thirty nine because if they touch forty, it just doesn't count. Uh, they no, they, hey. they they do ask you like, so you won. However, are you available to receive the award in person? Number one. Number two, will you be under forty on this date on November 9th? Really, yes. and that and they take all that into consideration. <laughs> yes, really. One of the other winners turned forty uh, two days later. Yeah. Really? She, she actually had her, her like celebration party at Hartman's. She was <laughs> like, I made it by two days. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, we're like, we're going to nominate Caleb just to see how awkward. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not very successful in anything I do, so not even on the podcast. I was the second favorite host in the vote. <laughs> Start oh, a yeah. campaign. I wanted to touch on that, Caleb. Our voting episode. Yes, you, you threw out a vote. <laughs> well, we really? talked about it. We did a voting episode, and we said, you know, in, during the show we said, We'll throw something up. Vote for your favorite host. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to elaborate on the results? Oh, uh, Jerry won. He had uh, 12 votes. Uh, I got second place. I had six votes. And uh, Gio had four. It was really... Thank you for you the know, participation yeah, thank you, to guys. the 20 people who participated. <laughs> 22. 22. What the fuck? You know, over, Yo, over where thousand, are all you people? Over 1,000 followers. Only 22 votes. You know, that's how the voting Sheesh. system is corrupt, you know? I, I don't know what's going on here. Our Insta, we got like 1,200 followers on Instagram. Can't get one fucking question answered. We'll get like over 1,000 people to listen to an episode, but only 20 people participate in the vote. I hope you guys <laughs> like the uh, pictures and clips I use, like Jerry on the horsey, you know, riding around, and uh, Roy Rage Geo with the pumping, pumping iron music. Yeah, I don't know where the hell that. Like, you just grabbed a photo of me like randomly at like uh, PCA. I well, I asked. Jerry, it was a nice photo. You looked big. I asked yeah. Jerry for an embarrassing picture because I wanted to do funny things of us, but you know that's all I could come up with. I thought of one. I just couldn't do it. Oh boy, I thought of one picture I have. But you know that's how uh, voting and democracy works. You know that's what we had our voting uh, episode about. Uh, I had another question for you, Justin. This was on your bucket list in your interview. For the 40 under 40. Go ahead. Uh, it's about cage diving with great white sharks in Dude, South Africa. Is, so bad. Is, are you going to make that happen? So they're not in South Africa anymore. So I'm a huge, I love Shark Week. Like I go nuts for it. Really? Okay. Uh, Hartman's had a big Shark Week party this last summer. I just, it's it's to the point where my wife and I try to set a vacation around it. We want to be near a beach during Shark Week. So we can lay out in the sun, get sunburnt, go have a bunch of cocktails, go back and just watch a ton of Shark Week. That's our jam. So, okay. uh, but the, I'll try to make this short. There's two, it's crazy. No, there's, like... there's two killer whales that have chased off famous worldwide killer, like they're famous worldwide that have chased off all the sharks out of, out of um, Cape Town, South Africa. You now have to go to a different city, uh, town to go watch them. And, uh, but I just want to see them jump out of the water or, or get in a cage and see one. Huh. A yeah. great white shark. A great white shark. Yeah. Sure. Is that your favorite Are, shark? I just want to ask one little question. Sure. Are you fucking crazy? To see, I don't, how bro, many people like I understand how cool it would be to see it. Yeah. But are you fucking nuts? I wouldn't go in there for a long time. I'd probably jump in, oh my god, and get the fuck out. I'm gonna say, dude, as soon as you hit that water and you're in the cage and they start banging on the cage, because sometimes they do. I've yes. seen I've seen Shark Week. Oh yeah. There's no chance in hell you're sitting in there not saying, This was a stupid fucking idea. Why did I do this? <laughs> pull me up, pull me up. I'm done. I've had enough. And then you're gonna have to they're gonna That's have to it? throw away that wetsuit. <laughs> but then, yeah. then I have that not number. for being I have that experience. <laughs> or you know what they say: if you've ever been to Myrtle Beach, they say anytime you're in the water, you're ten feet away from a shark. So maybe just go down to Myrtle Beach, take a little swim, and there'll be sharks around you. You won't, you won't know it. You might not see it. But if you also go fishing off the pier, you can catch some. I've had a friend catch a shark right off the pier. So 
you know, there's a little Shark Week experience right. for you. See, so I don't have to go to South Africa is what you're saying. Exactly. You know, okay. keep it a little uh, economic Local. friendly and uh, <laughs> stay in the States. Yeah. Bring, bring your money to South Carolina. Or the, don't you have to get a whole bunch of shots if you go to Africa? Too? Yes. So, you know, maybe you can save on immuniz- immunizations and stuff like that, you know? Uh, yes, but I'm going to make it happen. Maybe Swim not in a cage with soon. sharks. Doesn't have to be in Africa, but it could be in America. Actually, now they're coming to the, they're coming to us. They're all up and down the East Coast now. Jesus, the Great Christ. Whites. I just want like... to point out, like this guy wants to go hang out in the water <laughs> with such an apex predator that it hasn't had to evolve in like fifty thousand years. Maybe fifty million years. Like maybe longer than that, dude. They made I... like six shitty B level horror movies, and it scared everybody from the ocean for years. They killed Sam- Samuel L. Jackson, bro. <laughs> what makes you feel any better? I, I would love to, to jump in a shark, a, a cage, and see a great white. Let's I'm jump terrified. Shark, of, terrified of heights. I get scared on a ladder. <laughs> really? What about like a uh, orca? You like an orca, like a killer whale? I actually would be more freaked out because I think I don't know they're 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 shifty. Do you ever see those uh, videos of the people on like paddle boats yes. with the orcas? They like are playing with them. I'm like, bro. As soon as that thing is just like, yeah, I'm a little hungry right now. I'm going to flip this motherfucker. It's it, over. They're starting to attack boats now. It's like a thing. Like, the killer whales right now are so smart. They're like finding like a seal or a fucking sea lion that are just hanging out on an iceberg. And a bunch of them, like the, what do they call it? Like a, the pack. Uh, is it a pool? Pod, pod. A pod. Yeah. yeah. The pod will come. And they're so smart, they'll start breaking the ice apart till the fucking sea lion has no area left on the ice to sit, and then it has to fall into the water. They're so fucking smart. So that's what happened in Cape Town, South Africa, is these two particular killer whales were teaming up on great whites and eating their liver, because it was high in whatever, and they, all these great whites were washed up on shores with their liver missing. And so they, all the great whites moved, had to move up the coast. So that's kind of like humans when you want to go out and get that filet mignon. They just get rid of the rest of the cow. You, the, you just want the fillet. The fillet. And that's, that's I guess, to the orca, the fillet. The fillet. Yeah. Well, I hope that happens for you. I'd, Thank you. you know, send that. us the pictures. That'll be sweet to see. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. Send me pictures. Don't don't send me the experience. Because <laughs> I, I don't yeah. think the video is going to be good. I envision this being like, uh, you know, everyone thinks it's a good idea to go on those slingshot balls at like the fair and shit. Sure. And then you see the videos and you're like, wow, that is not what I expected it to be. <laughs> <laughs> and I just feel like it'll be like that. It'll just be me this in the water. This is so stupid. <laughs> All of a sudden, you just see a plume. Of, like I soiled the. Entire- <laughs> <laughs> it would make sense. I would never discredit you for that. I mean, that's Listen, what I would do. Any like, do you guys see the video of like? There's like, like you said, the kayak and the, one of the whales just ate it and spit it out. Yeah. Oh like, yeah, yeah, that was like a blue oh, whale. Yeah. Like, like come the blue whale there. came yep. up, yep. just got like a mouthful of it. And then was just like, yeah, yeah, that's not food, and spit it out. But still, the guy went into the well. Straight Pinocchio style. Yeah. First off, yeah, there is no chance on this earth that that dude did not absolutely shit his pants. <laughs> you think that guy ever went back into the water? I don't think I ever would. Mm-mm. I think I would just immediately start paddling to the nearest like shoreline. I don't care. I'm done. I would I would never leave dry land again. I'd set uh, yeah, I think, land forever. And I'm gonna just throw this out there. And obviously, Justin, you having this love for sharks and shark week and everything. If there is one death in the world you can avoid, it's being eaten by a shark. Oh, I would agree with you hundred percent. You can't get eaten by a shark if you never go in the water. That's you also cannot. True. You just have to go into the ocean to get eaten by a shark. Yet some people still get eaten by sharks. What happened to that kid on the cruise ship? Did you see that video? Oh, the guy who just disappeared that. while yeah. he was in like high school spring break or college spring break? That's crazy. So he jumped Adios. off. There was a video. We did touch on this video. Yeah. We played it in uh, on the show. Summertime. The kid jumped off the cruise ship. For anybody out there that didn't see the video floating around, maybe you can still YouTube it, but the kid jumped out, thought it would be funny. First right. things first. I want to touch on that boat's not stopping. By the time you get to the captain, they threw him a life vest, whatever... It would take that boat, how long you think, to turn? About half an hour. Half hour at least for them to even get in the same spot. Right. This is the one in the Bahamas. Yes. The, the so, at, at nighttime. Yeah. At, at nighttime. Right. right. The, the kid jumped out, must have saw something in the water because he swam away from the oh, life yeah. vest. Oh. And from my understanding is they never saw him again. I, from my under, It seemed like a shark, he saw something in the water, a shark grabbed him right away. 
conspiracy theory. If they're around the Bermuda I- I- Islands, he got lost in the Bermuda, Bermuda Triangle. No, He's he gone. got lost in a great wife's belly. Yes. It was right off of NASA from what I... Some shit like yeah. that. Terrifying. Again. The ocean... Pointless, unavoidable death. Or uh, avoidable. avoidable death. Totally avoidable. How much of this planet is covered in water? 70%. It's way Something more like than there should be. Okay. <laughs> we still don't know what is at the bottom of the ocean in terms of every species. Don't fuck with the ocean, people. We've oh. <laughs> we've been to the moon, but we have not been to the bottom of the ocean. Like the Marina Trench. Yeah, the like, Mariana Trench. Mariana Trench. Whatever. I'm like 38% convinced Megalodons still exist. Really? Yeah, I, I think, think there's so. like an area for them. I think they just are really deep, deep dwellers, eating the big old fish. I mean, they get Megalodon. A Megalodon. They have these weird like Google images where you see Oh yeah. They're like the cameras, you know, they're it's it's wild. I think it could be it could be our next conspiracy theory. Yeah, I'm I think about it could it. be. But you're talking the about the, the absolute most apex water predator ever. Knocking over carnival cruise ships. I don't know. Call Jason Statham. I don't know. <laughs> I, I might have to disagree. All right. I feel like we definitely would have found one. Somebody would have been like eaten by one. Uh, or what well, happens to the dead bodies of like one that was living? Like it's got to wash up somewhere. Perhaps maybe they're too heavy and they just float right to the bottom. Or they're they're it's way out in the middle of the ocean. They float on top and they just get picked apart by, you know, the rest of the shark population. I don't know. Whatever scavengers I, are in the ocean with the technology that's advanced in the last twenty years and everybody having phones and whatnot. Who it, studies sharks? Marine biologists. I would imagine. Yeah, probably. You're like our resident. Oh, marine I, oh that, that was like an official question. Sure, yeah. it's got to be marine biologists and weirdos like me who like sharks. Dog, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a, you you came full circle. This whole conversation we went on a tangent, and I'm gonna just say it. Fuck that. Fuck that, dude. <laughs> on that note, fuck that. Some more of that cotter. <laughs> yeah. I'll circle back to a little bit of the whiskey talk. So, uh, Justin, mm-hmm. what's next for you? Uh, anything like experimental five and six in the works? Perhaps? Yes. Of course. Yes. Right? I can't elaborate on them too much, but we, we definitely... You, you got to... In this, in this climb, people want, you know, new, variety. different variety. Exactly. What's What can I get my hands on? And we like to be able to get it to as many people as we can. That's why we always do it in the, the 375s, mm-hmm. right? And try to keep that price point where anybody can buy it. It's not just your high-end clientele or whatever. Um, so we constantly, we constantly have stuff in the works. And that'll be like a once a year drop thing. The experimental is two a year, uh, perhaps. We, yeah. Right now we, we've been aiming for that September. We, we kind of like to kick off allocated bourbon season with it, right? Like, all right, it's September, it's whiskey season. Allocations are coming out. We can start with a $27 bottle of, of something cool that Hartman's produced and we can, we could get our hands on it. Now of the four you've done so far, have you considered making any of them a regular production? The double oaked. That, oh. that sold so quickly. Really? Yeah. I think it sold faster than Grand Marnier, and it was double the bottom. Uh, see, I feel like for me, and this is just a personal preference, mm-hmm. I've had three of the four. Mm-hmm. I have not had the uh, the toasted, the, or the double oak toast. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like the port finish was really good. The fr- the I think that would be number one. The stout. Yes, the stout. The stout, the stout finish. The stout, sorry. That, you're not wrong. That has probably the most demand. Everybody says that. Like, do another stout, do another stout. So it was that good. Yeah, it yeah, really you always, was. You can always find another stout barrel out there, something you like, you know, too. Give yeah. it a different. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, that's probably one of the easier ones to consistently, or you know, keep the quality control where you need it to be. We th- we thought about making that a, a yearly release and just doing it with another local brewery every year. Because now Hartman's barrels are at, we're at about seven or eight different breweries. Used Hartman's barrels. That's pretty dope. So I just want to ask one more question, and this is going to be for our general audience. Sure. Um, for any of our listeners that would love to get their hands on this, how can they get uh, you guys ship? Or you guys do anything like that? Do you guys have ways of you know getting our listeners these bottles if they have interest in this? Absolutely. So we just launched uh, online sales. So you can go right to www.hartmansdistilling.com. Click right on buy a bottle. Uh, and all of our SKUs will come up. And right now we are offering free shipping as kind of a promotional, hey, we're finally doing this for the first 100 orders. We've already shipped uh, a few to Florida, uh, one to Louisiana. 
Uh, we're in 10 states. We could New York, of course, right now, uh, California, Florida, Louisiana, D.C., uh, and a couple other ones. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And I'm so, sure all the other states are listed on the sites so for you guys. Correct. Yes. Yeah. West Virginia. Uh, what's NM? New Mexico. Yeah, New Mexico, Mexico dude. What? New Mexico, Oregon, North Dakota. This is why he failed the citizenship Wyo test. Wyoming. <laughs> he did. Did he really? He did. And on he, our show. And he, <laughs> I didn't fail. I just lost the geo. I just got more wrong. Okay, so you failed. this is another callback <laughs> to an older episode. Uh, for any of our listeners out there that have not made their way to Caleb Gets Deported is the name of the episode. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, Caleb takes the citizenship test, right? Caleb fails the citizenship test. Didn't then fail. goes on this rant about Didn't how fail. it doesn't matter because he was born in the United States. They can't deport him. It was this whole thing, but Caleb failed very simple questions that Americans should know. You, you asked me all the hard ones. I'm going to harp This sounds on that. like an episode, of, or this sounds like fucking Big Daddy. <laughs> you gave him all the easy ones. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. That's true. Go back and watch. But You'll, I knew the answers. See. I actually, I'm pretty sure from most of them, I said the answer after you answered it wrong. All right, let's mm, let's yeah. get let's get back into this. He can ship to ten states. Caleb started listing them. He doesn't know what New Mexico is. That is actually a country. It's a state. It's a country. New, New Mexico. Yes, New, it's New Mexico. It's a state, though. Okay. No shit, dude. Well, don't, tell people, don't tell people it's a country. <laughs> New, New, it's <laughs> not Mexico. It's New Mexico. <laughs> It's still not Mexico. It's New Mexico. It's better than Mexico because it's part of the United States. All right. So for anybody in those states that is looking for a bottle of this, they can get that right at Hartmans.com. What's the website? www.hartmansdistilling.com. So it has all of our uh, our products on there, and the cotter will be on there uh, later this week. Perfect. So, and uh, just to disclose, the cotter, you said, uh, what is it? You did 500 bottles from four barrels? 500 bottles from four barrels. It didn't use all the whiskey. Um, we, we wanted to make sure the blend was where we wanted it to be. Uh, so there's you know, there some, still some, it ended up being some wheat left over and just a touch of rye. Sweet. But um, yeah, we, we limited it to 500 bottles. And uh, most of it will go out to liquor stores and be released this Tuesday, the 22nd. Uh, so, Coming up real so fast. If you're in the Western New York area, Rochester, Syracuse, check your local liquor store. And then we'll release them at the distillery on Friday at 3 p.m. when we open. And we'll also have a limited number at Makers and Shakers event uh, hosted by Step Out Buffalo down at the Buffalo Powerhouse. Awesome. All great information for our listeners. And if you're a local listener, make sure you guys get down there and get your hands on this bottle. I can tell you right now, as one of the first people to try it, this is a fantastic bottle. Uh, even if you're just a collector and you just want to let this thing gather dust on a shelf, I think this thing... In the sleeve would look really nice on your shelf. Yeah, we've already had a uh, the the fire company and the and the volunteers and whatnot involved uh, have already reached out and said, oh, "I want my badge number. Can you save me this one? Can you save me that one?" Which is cool. I understand that. So we've we've set a couple aside for those that help to make it happen. This low key is giving me an idea. So I'm gonna roll with this, and I think I might have a great idea in the in the in the works. And I think this is a project I think you might be interested in as well. Okay. Mm. So hopefully it all works out. Maybe I can get something going. I feel like I might be able to ask the right person. I mean, so the URT? <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, even URT. Yeah, something <laughs> like that. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool. But uh, I just want to thank you for coming on the show, Justin. Um, we'll obviously close out. We have a couple more things we're going to get to. Sure. But... Uh, yeah. Is there anything you want our people to know before we do like our closing stuff? It's probably, a, you know, we have a little more time left, but we have a couple stories we got to get into. Something I think you'll be interested in. Okay. But uh, is there anything you want our listeners to know? Uh, just ch check out uh, the Cotter when it's, when it's officially released. And um, yeah, guys, thanks for having me. I was enjoy, uh, enjoy being here. And you guys are really definitely <laughs> growing here. That's awesome. It's awesome to see, man. Yeah. Well done, guys. Love it. And we still, we've been talking about doing a show at Hartman's. You're always welcome. We could do, we go live right from the distillery. Yeah. The, the only problem is, though, the cigars. That'd be an issue. Uh, I mean, on the down low, we could talk about that. <laughs> okay. No, all right. Nothing okay. on tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. I like that. 
But uh, Caleb, you had a couple what new stories you wanted to get into, buddy? No, Patrol Gone Wild. Patrol Gone Patrol Wild. Gone you want to get into? Yeah, always first. Okay, always first. So we'll get into that. Let's do it. Patrol Gone Wild. We're doing it big. Bang bang. All right, I got a little clip with this one, but I'll just give you the headline first. So we have daycare workers are arrested for running a child fight ring in South Carolina after being caught on camera encouraging kids aged between three and four to slap and hit each other. Uh, there's a little graphic for you. Uh, the first rule of daycare fight club school is to cover up your cameras. And uh, I'll let the clip play. So we got a funny little clip for you. Oh, that, that's, nope, that's not the one. Uh, which one is it, Caleb? It's the one at the top, of course. There it is. This one. Trying to motivate the kids into participating in that. Erica Sarai Jones and Serena Caldwell appeared in bond court Thursday on child abuse and neglect charges. The incident report lists at least 14 juvenile victims between the ages of 3 and 4. After reviewing security footage, the daycare immediately alerted the sheriff's office and fired Jones and Caldwell. We've had daycare workers that have assaulted children and daycare workers that may have taken punishment a bit too far. But nothing like this. I've never seen anything like this in my life. In addition to inciting these kids to fight, Caldwell's also accused of striking one of the young children with a box of baby wipes. One parent who wished to remain anonymous says she doesn't believe this is indicative of a culture at the daycare. I hate that these two women kind of tarnish the name of this daycare. Um, but at the same time, I'm glad that... All right. Elaborate, Caleb. All right. So, uh, you got three and four-year-olds just uh, slapping and fighting each other. Uh, obviously, there was uh, daycare camera footage that led to the arrest, but also one of the child uh, went home to their parents and they said that they were asked to hit and fight their classmates. So, you know, was between a kid telling the parents and video footage, these people got arrested. This is, you know, These kids are like my age, asked to have a fight club at daycare. Uh, they are facing between 15 counts for uh, delinquency to minors and unlawful conduct towards a child. So... Uh, <laughs> They are facing some charges, obviously fired from their jobs. Uh, safe to say these people will not be running a daycare again. Uh, they were let go on $60,000 and $56,000 bonds. So uh, their trial and hearing is to be at a, you know, determined at another time. Because this is uh, pretty fresh news out of South Carolina. So, uh, <laughs> What these- the fuck is happening in these towns? I like the <sighs> like the sheriff or whoever that is. <laughs> like the important guy is like... In all my years, I've never seen anything like this. This is crazy. See, okay. Now, this might actually be something positive if it wasn't four-year-olds. Like, if this was something like... Positive. Boxing. Oh, like, okay. like, you think of how that goes at the Boys and Girls Club, right? Like, there's plenty of places for it. But, oh my god, what the fuck are we thinking, people? These are toddlers. They don't want to hit one another. I don't no. think kids... Little like, kids just want to play. They don't want to fight. No, like, they're not, you can't train them to be the next Mike Tyson. <laughs> Bite little Johnny's ear. <laughs> Sweep the leg. What do you think of this, Justin? <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Come on. Keep your kids this, at home. This is right? wild. <laughs> don't, maybe don't send your kids to daycare. <laughs> Would you sign your kids up for, uh, for daycare fight club? <laughs> daycare, no, not daycare fight club. We, we already started looking at daycares. We got to do that in the kids what, like wasn't even born yet. That's a thing now. Yeah, I think the... We didn't see Fight Club on any of the uh, tours, though. That's a shame, because I feel like the kids would enjoy that. <laughs> you got to go to South Carolina, though, apparently. Imagine the pay-per-view on that. And here <laughs> we have Caleb Suzik at a whopping 5-2 versus little Johnny 4-year-old. I'd like to see Caleb fight a Caleb is plus 500. The kid, yeah, but the kid might have a height advantage. <laughs> Now, what would you guys rather do? Fight like a hundred four year olds or like four hundred year olds? <laughs> so, so it's it's a hundred four year olds <laughs> against you. Yep. Or, versus or you gotta fight four hundred year olds <laughs> to the death. No, not to the death, just to like to, to victory. So you gotta either tire them all out or uh, or you lose. I don't know. I'm not saying you have to kill these people. Listen, or be- I'm just gonna do like a ginger jog around these like 400 year olds. Like, <laughs> give, them, give them like a tap and just push them over. <laughs> like, come on, you'll break a hip there. That could kill them. That could kill a hundred year old. 
eventually, long term. Like, yeah, long term, they get sepsis. It's a good question. It just doesn't work out. It's a good question to ask. You know, what would you rather do? <laughs> Beat up a whole bunch of four year olds or a hundred year olds? <laughs> <laughs> One to think about. All right, I like it. Caleb, like what would it. you pick? Yeah, that's a great question. What which what would you pick? I feel like I could do a lot more damage, like death wise, to the hundred year olds. So maybe I'd go with the four year olds because I don't have to hurt them too bad. Maybe just like a push, and they'll cry and they'll be done, and they will leave right. me alone. How many? Just thinking, I wouldn't actually do this before you, you get like kicked in the nuts or something by one of these four year olds. How many do you think you could get on you know the proverbial kill streak for oh. the hundred four year olds? Like, we're going Call of Duty, you got one life to live, you got to get to 100 to win. Oh, I'm, Battle Royale. <laughs> before I take, like, damage to my hit points, I'm taking down at least 75 of them. No doubt. No doubt. I don't know, bro. You might get winded after, like, 30. <laughs> That's right. They they got ferocious energy. Yeah. I would know. Holy fuck. <laughs> Great question. This took a dark turn. <laughs> uh, it's a real dark Whoa. turn. <laughs> we can move on to the next patrol gun while, then I'll think of another question like that. All right, guys. So... Mine is a, you know, little patrol story out of Ontario, Canada. Perfect. This particular officer's favorite movie was the original Fast and the Furious. All right, let's play it. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> oh, did you see that? Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, that was honestly pretty impressive. First of all, that guy probably got fired. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Look at the... That Durango is going way too fast. Uh, yeah, but my, yeah. my thing is this, right? That was like in another language on the bottom of the screen. That might be totally acceptable. No, so I looked it up on the highway signs, and I found it by the... My, it's uh, off King Street near like... It's just outside of Toronto. Come on. It looked like yeah, a Toronto wow. skyline. Really? No, no. Wow. Yeah. I looked it up. because I had to figure out where the exit was because this clip was going pretty viral. Damn. And clearly this officer's favorite scene was that OG Fast and the Furious where Michelle Rodriguez has the Civic that goes right under the semi that they're trying to rob. I got to say, that is such a dangerous move. First off, if that semi so slows up, and it, that car's fucked. What do you think the semi driver was thinking in this moment? Like, truthfully. First off, like, how the fuck does that, like, that dude probably had the fucking radar going to know exactly the cruise control, the speed of that semi, but also balls. Do you think the semi driver knew at the time? Mm, I don't know, no, man. That's an so. extreme <laughs> coordinated effort, but also, like, I'm impressed. Badass of the week right there. They take speeding very seriously in Canada. Do they actually? Dude, you can't even go to Canada with a DWI, so I I imagine speeding they take very seriously. I don't know, man. I've been on the QEW. <laughs> it seems pretty lawless to me. It says 60 kilometers. It's not 60 miles per hour, <laughs> so yeah. be careful. <laughs> Whatever it is, dude. They were going at it for <laughs> definitely the extent to catch a speeder. All right. Well, I love that. Yeah. All right. Listen, I got one more story. Uh, This one... Got to bring up a nice Florida man story. It's a Florida man arrested for taking a shit on a dead possum. Yes. Uh, this actually <laughs> happened. So, holy fuck. So, a Florida man arrested for pooping on a dead possum during rush hour traffic. A Florida man was arrested after allegedly defecating on a dead possum in the middle of rush hour traffic, according to police. Rudy Wilcox, 45, was picked up in Clearwater on Wednesday around 5.30 p.m. after he was seen taking a shit in the middle of Belcher and Willow Tree Trail intersection. Uh, yeah, apparently this guy says that he didn't do it, uh, but after some video was leaked of the incident and the evidence team came out, it was determined that there is a good chance that he actually was doing it. Uh, his exact <laughs> expression was, uh, yeah, that officer didn't see things straight that day. Uh Mr. Wilcox is actually a homeless man. Uh, no surprise here, judging by his meth mites, his meth mites, and his homeless look to him. I, I'm just gonna say, like, it's exactly what I pictured if I read a headline that says a man shit on a possum. 
I just like that that picture of the street. I figured this was more in like the backwoods, not like in a nice uh, suburban community. I Clearwater is like really nice. Yeah, uh, that's like in the Tampa area. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, man, that's fucking crazy. Can you imagine seeing that? He, I guess he didn't see the cop underneath the semi driving by. <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Like the fucked up thing is, this is just so goddamn common with people. Like we're just driving the other day and we see some woman just start pissing on the middle of the sidewalk. She like, d- she pulled her pants down on Bailey Avenue. No, it was William. William. William and Bailey. Yes. Like, right there. And she just pulled her pants down, took a piss on the sidewalk, pulled her pants up, and just kept walking. And we're like, what are you doing? And this woman's like, I couldn't hold it. I was like, so you just do it on the sidewalk? You don't go to, like, at least be discreet, hide behind something? Right. What is wrong with you? I guess it's efficient. I guess. <laughs> if you gotta go, just let it go. Let it loose. She's like, what do you want me to do? Just pee my pants? I'm like, whatever you gotta do. Just not in... There's there like, could be kids. It's This is like rush hour, like middle of the day. It's like five o'clock. There was still daylight. And it gets dark at like 530 here. Can I ask you a question? <laughs> what do you think was worse? Because right around the same time at 530 in Clearwater, a man was taking a shit on a possum. So what would you rather see? The woman pulling your pants down, peeing on the sidewalk, or a man in the middle of the intersection taking a shit on a dead possum? <laughs> do, do you think he saw the possum? He's like, oh, finally, I had to go. <laughs> I'm waiting for more details to develop in this story, but apparently it looks pretty weird. He had, he had to cross that one off his bucket list, you know, just shitting on a possum. It's like maybe like he thought because he ran the possum was dead, like, you know, like how people like shit themselves when they die. Like maybe that was just, oh, maybe this, people just think it's the possum, not human shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, blame the dead animal. <laughs> It was the dog. <laughs> a crazy fucking story out of Florida. Uh, I don't expect anything less out of that state. Uh, I'd move to that state. Good weather. No taxes. Great stories. Great stories. <laughs> Great patrol gone wilds. Always. That being said, that'll wrap up our patrol gone wild for the week. But Caleb had a couple news stories he wanted to get to. So let's bust into those. Let's do it. All right, first, we have Old Forester's 150th Anniversary Bourbon is uh, coming out on December 5th. It's uh, available at distillery, pickup only. It's going to be about $2,500 while supply lasts. So this is in ode to uh, Brown Foreman, one of Old Forester's uh, founders. It's uh, to celebrate his 150th birthday. So this is aged for 12 and a half years. So this is the oldest bourbon that Old Forester puts out. So 12 and a half years uh, out of, you know, Louisville, Kentucky, Warehouse J, uh, six barrels only of this. So it comes in a, it comes with the, the bottle is a decanter as well. So uh, if you guys are on the bourbon hunt, you like Old Forester, be on the lookout for this. It's going to be bottled at 50% ABV and uh, very limited amount of bottles. So if you're looking for it. On uh, secondary, $12,000. <laughs> that's what I was thinking, yeah, right? dude. This is... This is probably going to be unobtainable for most. Yes. Oh yeah. I I can't imagine the line for when this drops on December fifth. All the people just waiting for this thing, and who knows how much bottles they're going to release that day too, at the distillery. Probably not even close to what they say. And what's special about December fifth? End of prohibition. Ah, it is. It is oh, the- and Hartman's fourth anniversary. Oh, hey! got him. Oh, there you go. That makes sense. I It'd like be, that. Fun could li- be my daughter's birthday. <laughs> it could be Gio's daughter's birthday. Aww. Fun little fact about Old Forester. It's the only bourbon to exist before, during, and after Prohibition. Really? Cool. So what better way to celebrate than releasing this to the public in a rare decanter as well? So do you have to be on their email, you know, we invited to go purchase one? Or do you think you could line up two days before outside the... It's- Dude, I went to Kentucky, <laughs> and I couldn't even get a bottle of 10-year fucking Michter's. They were like, well, we're not going to release anything today. I swear to God, I walked across the street to Bardstown, their new tap room. It's mm-hmm. beautiful if you get a chance to go. And then they released Mictor's tenure across the street, and they were all gone in five minutes. Oh, I was like, dude, you guys are burn. fucking dicks, the dude. Burn. Fuck oh, you. So with these 500 uh, bottles that they're releasing, 150 are going to be set aside for special tastings and events. Another 150 for like family members. 
and then the rest are going to be for the public. So, oh, so probably, 200 bottles about, about 200 nationwide, bottles, yes. worldwide? Worldwide, yes. Yeah. So I have a little tip for your listeners for Old Forester releases. If you manage to book the very first tour and tasting on the day that they do a release, they save you one. Really? Because you're you're foregoing your opportunity to be in the line. You're able to purchase one. We just purchased a, a birthday bird when we were down there. Oh, oh you got the 23, huh? Uh, it was last year's birthday bird. 22. 22, yeah. Did you open it? Uh, yeah. How was it? That's good. I don't, yeah? It, it didn't blow me away, but, you know. For we got it at uh, I think they buck fifty. Good price, yes. yeah. What great price to get that at. I mean, at hey. that price, yeah, I would definitely crack it. Like, there's people. Uh, that's the one thing that's weird with bourbon, man. Like, you buy something for like six, seven hundred dollars, and you're like, that's like Jerry, <laughs> and you're like, oh, do I really want to crack this yet, or is this just the trophy? I have this bottle of Pappy Van Winkle, the thirteen year rye. I was supposed to drink it at my wedding. Didn't. Supposed to drink it for the birth of my daughter. Didn't. And still sitting on the shelf collecting dust. I, it's just weird. FYI. You, FYI, you say. FYI, I heard that's one of the best bourbons you ever drink. Yeah? A hundred percent. I don't like rye, so. <laughs> was told people keep the bottle just to keep smelling how great it smelled. Really? Yeah. Oh, no doubt. Been told that by a couple people. I'll probably never drink it. <laughs> save, it uh, save it for a special occasion. Unless, unless he gets I did. A... What's more special than your wedding and the birth of your well, first daughter? Maybe save it for a, like a five, ten year anniversary, something like that. You or your daughter's graduation from uh, high school or something like that. Okay. You know, there you go. I appreciate the advice, buddy. I heard, I heard one of the best whiskeys you'll ever drink. He still ain't cracking it. Just, well, just, say, not, that, just that's saying. not a big enough day. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Not a big enough day. All right. When the show hits a million subscribers. <laughs> yeah. That might be a big enough day. <laughs> if we're getting a, a million enough, enough subscribers, you could buy another bottle. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. But what else you got, Caleb? All right. Up next. Or no. What is this? This is Geo. Geo. All, All right. right. So we are going to do Pastania SBC 22 shipping now. Finally. Our boy, Mike, man. The fuck? You're a little late on this release. <laughs> But the SBC 2022 finally shipping in December of 2023. I thought it was supposed to be out this month. <laughs> no, there's a the press release said there's going to be they're going to officially drop at an event they're having uh, December 5th as well. Coincidentally, ah. but uh, I hope I correct. I got that right there, but that's just off my memory. But it was a December 5th. I'm like 90 percent sure. Caleb, you want to pass that bottle while he's course, diving into these details? Now, for those of you who don't know, the Surrounded by Champions release by Pastania is always sought after. They do it on even number of years, typically, just for whatever reason, logistics didn't work out. Uh, Mike is on record saying that this is the best cigar Skip has ever blended. Really? Yeah, that's what he said in an article when he did an interview with our friends over at Half Wheel, you know. Maybe he just doesn't like us to tell us cool things like that. But he did send us a bunch, so thank you, buddy. <laughs> I, I mean, having smoked one, I'll say what a fantastic stick. Amazing. I really like the band this year. The colors mesh well, and yeah. if you're smoking it in like a dark room, the SPC really pops on the purple. So good job on the thumbnail, Gio. It, yeah. uh, it kind of looks like the cigar. Exactly. That was the point. <laughs> yeah, you did a good job, man. Yeah. I give you some credit. We'll, we'll, we'll send that to Mike, you know. <laughs> I think you would enjoy that thumbnail. You would like that. Yeah. You would enjoy that thumbnail. I had to make sure it was a soccer player of all. like, Not for any particular reason other than when I looked for stock photos, the champion, a soccer player with a trophy popped up. Like Lionel Messi. You should have just put him on like Lionel Messi holding the World Cup. Uh, you know, got to You find- did what you did. Yeah. It was I should have. Well, the original option was going to be on like like some, uh, what's the foot? It was like an, the one Olympic swimming chick, uh, Katie Ledecky. I was gonna put his face on that. Oh, I thought it. you were gonna do the other one. Uh, <laughs> what's her? Uh, what's her name? I don't. I, I know what you're going with, but the Penn State swimmer, Le- thought, Leah Thomas. It's Leah Thomas. You Penn. You Penn. Not you Penn. Sorry. 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 Yeah. Yes. Leah Thomas, the champion woman swimmer. Yep. Uh, what else we got, Caleb? All right. Our last story for news with Caleb. We have uh, Boveda increasing their prices. Uh, Gio, what do you got for us there? Well. It's the end of an era, boys. For the first time since 2005, Boveda has had to increase their prices. The 60 gram pack will be going up to a whopping 450, and the 320 gram humidity pack going up to 20. dollars These go into effect Jan one. 
Did you say the wait? They're going from four fifty to twenty dollars. No, no, the no, sixty no, no. grammer is oh. going to four fifty. The three hundred and twenty gram is going to twenty dollars. First time in all like almost twenty years they've had to raise prices. So essentially, this is like the Arizona iced tea of the cigar industry. Yeah, like you just never thought it would go beyond ninety nine cents. And, and then, then what is it now? Four fifty and twenty. <laughs> and of course, I'm a child and. Saw the 69% humidity pack, had to add the nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. We all appreciate the 69% humidity. So right. is, is that a good sign for the cigar industry? Does that mean there's more demand? So, is this a supply and demand thing? Are you familiar with Bovida? Yes. So obviously we know uh, there's a lot of cigar collectors. There's a lot of cigars out there in the world. You want to protect your investment. I'm surprised they didn't do this sooner. Obviously, I'm not like an advocate for people to just raise their prices for no reason, but yeah, I would say this is probably not great. Uh, just I think, it going up fifty cents. I think that's more indicative of the economy than it is Boveda. Boveda has they're they're the humidity pack. Like there's a few other companies that make various humidity solutions, but as far as portable for your travel humidors, even like tabletops like i'd say upwards of probably 90 percent like i have never saw anything other than that unless you had an actual like walk-in humidor that has a machine that generates it uh like uh brian Dessen with pravada who has like two million cigars stored he said he's like boveda keeps my business alive because i use their packets to store my cigars hmm. i'm sure they have some form of commercial grade version of it that's like 1,000 gram or whatever for humidity, but for the everyday consumer, an expensive hobby is already getting more expensive. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So that might just be more of a cost of, of them making the packets. Just yeah, inflation, they, I guess? Yeah, I mean, to not increase prices since 2005, right, like, right. they could have done it many times over, you know, in 10 cent increments, and no one would have batted an eye, but that's just how it's going to be, and... Right. I don't think they're gouging by any means. I don't think anyone's going to complain that a the twenty dollar one lasts like six months. Like this is not like you're having to do it repeatedly. Because I was just at a local cigar store and they were out of them. I was like, "How are you out?" Of that them? was another thing that's been happening. Uh, I see a lot of shops are almost struggling to keep them in stock. They're I I don't know if they're in like any kind of like shortage of them, but at one point I heard there may have been a shortage. But I did notice that they did go up in price on Amazon, which is normally where I get them. Okay. But yeah, well, yeah, it's got actually pretty wild. But yeah, this is obviously a story to keep an eye on if you're a person that collects cigars. We obviously don't like to see the price of keeping our uh, collections go up, but you got to protect them. So I wouldn't foresee anybody bitching too much about the fifty cents. It is what it is. Fair. Yeah, that, I mean, Caleb might. <laughs> Caleb, what do you think of that, bud? I got enough, and I know how to reuse them with distilled water, so we're good. You cheap fuck. <laughs> you know what, anytime I like, get cigars in the mail, they just include that Boveda pack, so I got I got plenty, and if you just like uh, put it in distilled water for a couple of days, they, they turn out great. So, That being said, Caleb, any notes before we get into the review? All right, I just want to say uh, tasting notes on this. I got a lot of chocolate and mocha notes, especially right on the cold draw right away. Uh, very smoky stick. Um, let me just get into it. Appearance, you had that very huge wrapper on this thing with uh, Sigmund Freud on there. Uh, two other bands on there. Uh, nine and a half. Appearance-wise, they know what they're doing with this uh, disruptor. Uh, burn, nine. Burned evenly the whole way through. I'm going to knock it a little bit on the construction. My... Uh, Wrappers kind of blowing up right there, and at the uh, head of the cigar too, it's kind of coming undone. I had to peel it a little bit as well. So eight there, uh, draw. I did a straight cut, nine, no issues whatsoever, and enjoyment. Uh, smoking it with you guys and drinking the new Cottercast with Justin here from Hartman's, uh, nine, nine there. So uh, forty-four and a half times it by two, eighty-nine overall score for me. Uh, great cigar, would definitely smoke it again. Uh, at the price point, definitely buy one at least. You gotta. So for me, I did actually have the opportunity to smoke the cigar a couple times. I am just going to go on record and say I remember the cigar being a lot better. Um, 
The appearance, I gave it a nine. I do like the cigar. I actually like the size of it. Uh, it's a pretty big cigar. So, I mean, this was... I'd like to say this is maybe an occasion cigar. Like, maybe something you got you got to put in some time. Uh, obviously, I think I still have one-third of it left. But uh, this is a cigar that's going to take some time. So, I gave the appearance a nine. The burn... I had some issue with the burn. I gave it an eight. Uh, I kind of fought this thing a little bit. I was relighting it a lot. Uh, I don't know if that's because I got long-winded in our conversations, but had some issues. Construction, this thing was falling all over me. I had my cigar wrapper blow up a little bit in certain points. Um, when I took off the big band, I had a little bit of a gap in the cigar. Uh, a little of the wrapper ripped off, so I docked it for that. The draw, I didn't really mind the draw. It was an 8.5. Um, maybe a little too loose of a draw. I straight cut mine, but... I mean, it is what it is. That could be user error as well. The enjoyment, I did enjoy the conversations that we had with Justin tonight. Obviously, thank you for coming on. Uh, the Cotter cast was amazing. Oh, thanks. Um, but so I did give this cigar, as far as enjoyment, I gave it a 9, bringing me to a 42.585 overall. Uh, not the best score I've ever given on the score, but not, absolutely not the worst. Um, if you're looking to smoke the Disruptor, uh, and you're finding yourself struggle a little bit with the price point of f almost $45 for the stick. Uh, if you got a 45 bucks burning a hole in your pocket, give it a whirl. That I would mean, be my advice. But I if you mean, don't, this is going to sound a little insensitive to Freud, but uh, there's a lot better cigars out there for that price, for that price point. So that, well, that's what I'll say on that. Well, in New York, this is probably pushing $60, $65. Correct. Because of our taxes. Mm -hmm. I touched that a lot and. We'll get into the burn as I'm literally relighting my cigar. Uh, appearance, I gave it an 8.5. The cigar itself looks great. I wasn't able to find like any imaging of the actual box. Like I try to incorporate that just because to see how it looks on a shelf. For a 10 count box, that's going to be at four, you know, four hundred and forty dollars. I would expect it to be something nice. That's a fucking lot of money. And considering every cigar manufacturer has told me these things cost like three to three fifty tops for a cigar, I I get there's an age tax and supposedly these are more aged tobacco. I I have a lot of problems justifying some you know, we're in a tough time right now. Forty four dollars is a lot of money for a cigar. I am I was expecting a little bit better for that price point personally. Uh, burn, I gave this an 8, same thing, I had to relight this a ton, and I think I talked less than most of you guys today, it's a little out of the norm. Construction, I disagreed a little bit with you, Caleb, I got pretty good construction out of this thing, I didn't have any issues, uh, I gave it an 8.5 on construction, uh, no ash wearing, took it when I want to, uh, Draw, I V-cut mine, zero issues, got the flavor I wanted from it. Enjoyment, I gave it an 8. I enjoyed the conversation, I love the cotters, I actually hate the size of this cigar. It is way too big. It's not enjoyable to me. If this cigar was probably a regular Corona size, I think it changes everything. I think it's... Even like a Robusto. Yeah. I mean, just... I think the length on the cigar really played into it, and... Like... Man, I'm telling you, I'm with you. I, I mean, Freud is a newer company, and they're really trying to hammer home that they're a premium cigar brand. Well, they brought on Eladio Diaz. Obviously, he used to roll for Davidoff. I mean, that's, right. that's huge. That's a huge to have a blender like that, but I don't think you need to go this crazy. This let, me, uh, let me ask you something. If this cigar is $30, how do you feel about it? I feel a little better. I'm just going to go on record and say I didn't pay for this. Neither did if I. If I did pay for this and it was 44 bucks, I'm going to tell you my review probably been, would have been a lot worse than it was. A Lancero would have been nice in this, you know. Yeah. They say almost the same length, but uh, just a little, you know. I don't know, man. Skinnier. It's it's a big big. Let stick. me ask you a question, Caleb. If you bought this for 45 bucks, how would you have felt about it? Uh, it kind of would have been less than stellar if I had to pay for this one. Sure. No offense. Just being honest. No, that's, that's what we do, man. Like, We're going to give it a fair review. Like, I don't think we... We, I, we killed it by I, any means. I like the Super Ego better. So did I. I agree on that. I, and, the, and the Agape was an amazing cigar as well. I got to smoke a few of those, and I really enjoyed the Agape. But again, way less of a cigar. It was way less. 
I mean, for an LE release from this brand, I was I was expecting a little more, especially with the history behind it. You got a guy who blended for Davidoff, which is known for being the OG boutique cigar. I mean, you're talking ultra premium. Like you got you got you know a guy that's smoking Davidoff and collects Davidoff cigars. That guy is oh, some of those boxes. Some of Davidoff boxes of core line are five hundred dollars. Exactly. Like that's people who are spending their money. They want like if you're going to that price point. You better give me my fucking money's worth. Sure. If I'm the average listener and I just bought this because I wanted to try it, I don't feel I got my money's worth. But I also don't like this size cigar. Sure. And if you do and this is your jam, like you might love this, but that's how I feel. My score totaled out to be a 42, giving it an 84. Oof. What, how do we do, Caleb? All right. Overall score? 86 from the three of us. So, right. not bad. Over That's an terrible. 85. Pretty good score. So, Justin, you were about to say something? I had a question uh, based on something you said earlier that they don't disclose where they got the tobacco from? Correct. On this. Is, is it in the cigar world, is it is it parallel to the bourbon world in that... Um, I'll have an older bourbon that's a, that's a blend and they'll say something like, oh, it's, you know, from Tennessee and I get, I taste Flintstone vitamins. I'm like, that's Dickel. I know what that is. Right. Can you, can you pick that up in a cigar? Can you say, I'm getting some particular, is it, is it? I'm, I'm not advanced enough to do that. I am sure there are people that smoke like blenders that could tell you exactly where these leaves are from. So a lot of factories, when they do undisclosed, because there is still technically an embargo with Cuba, a lot of people think certain undisclosed means, oh, this is Cuban tobacco. Which is not always the case. No. Like, uh. they just don't want to disclose it. And that's fine if you're dealing, like, they're playing off this is supposed to be some premium age tobacco. Um, not it? that it isn't. And, and I'm not, I don't know. But that's I think it might just be the size I, that I, ruined I'm not the a fan. cigar. Like, I think of, uh, for example, Crown Heads with their Lavaretta. I think the oldest tobacco was five years or four years. But here's the difference. That Lavaretta was an awesome cigar. Right. Good size, too. And I'm pretty sure it yeah. was a thicker ring gauge, yeah. as a matter of fact. Yeah. So, like, again, I would say, yeah, it probably parallels the whiskey thing where they might, like, we know some manufacturers are a little bit more disingenuous with their sourcing than others. Right. Like, for whatever reason, like... The educated consumer doesn't know that if it's from Indiana, it's probably MGP, right? Like, right, right. Or Tennessee Dickel. So, right. like, I, I don't know. Like, I'm very curious as to see how this goes with this brand because this is someone that you know, what two years old, three, Tops? two years, two years old. This brand's been around, and they came out last year. So maybe, truthfully, maybe just getting ready to touch two years in existence. And I, I guess that's where I'm going with that at the price point. Wouldn't you want to disclose, hey, for $44, you're getting a 12-year-old Nicaraguan whatever. Correct. I, I agree. I, I agree with I you on that. I think that would probably help people want to buy this. But uh, I don't know, man. Like, I just i am disappointed, truthfully. Yeah. Like, and I'm not shitting on Freud because they made other products that I loved. Their last two cigars, the Super Ego and the Agape, were both amazing. And I don't know if this is an experiment with them. I'm not really too familiar with like their brand, especially because they're a little bit harder to get over in the Northeast. I don't know where their retailers are. I couldn't tell you, truthfully, a, a, a Freud retailer in the Buffalo area. I don't think there is all. any, truthfully. I've, I've seen, last year, I've seen it at one store only. Really? Oh. Just And it was only the Super nice Ego. Nice ash? Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, and they, nice only, and they only had the super ego. Big, yeah. That's a big brand. Yeah, or that's a big short. That's Retailer. a big store chain. So okay, you have one of the larger chains. Like to charge more than some Opus. Like I feel like you gotta come with the heat. Yeah, I agree with that statement. Like, because the average person's gonna see, all right, forty four dollar super ego or thirty five dollar. <clears throat> Opus Shark. Like, hey, I'll tell you what I'd rather do. I'd rather take that 44 bucks, spend another 66 and pick up a nice bottle of Hartman's Cotter Cat. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What Red a plug. Mind. What a plug. <laughs> that being said, guys, that's our cigar review for the episode. Uh, I just want to thank Justin Hartman for coming on, dropping this amazing bottle. Uh, obviously, this project means a lot to you. It means a lot yes. to the city of Buffalo, even as a as a police officer here. 
uh, I can say this this project means something to me as well. Uh, we were co- we coincide with the Buffalo Fire Department and we work with them daily together. So I mean, to to do a project like this and you know take a shot and and do something cool with the with the you know our first responders in the city. It's a really cool project and uh, you should be proud of yourself, man. This is awesome. Great. That being said, I do want to give you the floor. Shout out your plugs. Anything you want our listeners to know, shout them out as well. Absolutely. Please come and visit us down at 55 Chicago Street in Buffalo, New York. If you're local or if you're in town, uh, we have full bar, kitchen, tasting room. We're two turns off the 190, and uh, we just picked up uh, Buffalo News' best of 716 for happy hour and fan favorite cocktail lounge. So come check us out. Thank you guys so much for having me. I always have a blast when I'm here. Really appreciate it. We got to get working on that Buffalo 66 uh, release. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I was hoping the poster would be here. Would love to do that. Dude, oh. but it's so weird for me, though. <laughs> I know that's Maybe what Maybe just like it. the movie, the Buffalo 66 poster. Yeah. <laughs> just like the poster of the movie would be cool, but like... The, the fact that I'm pretty sure my cousin was one of the... Two of my cousins were the strippers in the movie. I thought a signed poster not. was going to be here waiting for me. <laughs> I'm sure I can still make it happen for you. Uh, but in case you guys didn't know, Hartman's actually has a secret bar, if you didn't see the viral clip that was floating around all over the internet. Yeah, so. yeah we have a little back bar, uh, the barrel room. Come check it out. Just ask to see the barrels. Over 300 different bourbons uh, on... skews on the back bar. It's a bourbon bar for sure. If there's anything you ever wanted to try, absolutely. Hartman's uh, Barrel Room is absolutely the place to try it. And we try to keep it at a decent price because it's 20 seats, sit down only, intimate, uh, and uh, we want to keep it that way. Reservations only, fellas. Unless you know a guy. <laughs> Unless you know a guy. You might, you might know a guy. But uh, that being said, Justin, thanks again for coming on the show. And uh, make sure you guys are checking out Hartman's Distillery. Uh, It's an amazing place. Great atmosphere. Good people. And uh, if you're looking to avoid those crazy uh, club-like bars, that's definitely the place to do it. Except on a Saturday night. Except on a Saturday (laughs) night. Because once I see that DJ rolling around 9, I know it's time to go. Yeah, yeah. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to the bail room. I'm going to go set premium shit. Yep, right. (laughs) Uh, Caleb, that being said, any closing notes to the episode? All right, guys. As always, just make sure you're following the YouTube. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Uh, Grower Gang, really appreciate you guys out there. Uh, we got the Facebook, the Instagram, and the TikTok. Make sure you're following and subscribing to all those as well. Appreciate all our followers and uh, stay active. We love you. And again, make sure you guys are checking out Hartman's Distillery and our boy Justin over there. Uh, congratulations on all the awards. Congratulations on the new baby. Thank and you, you uh, I wish you another 40 years of success, man. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Gio, anything? Choo choo. Guys, make sure you're checking us out on a Cigar Hustlers Podcast Network for you audio listeners only. We are the number one cigar podcast network on Podbean. As always, smoke them if you got them. Peace. Peace.